I am Dr. Khalid Amin Khan from Oil and Gas Development Company Limited, Pakistan. The title of my paper is Regional 3D Velocity Model Building, an Indus Basin Case Study. In this paper, a workflow is presented to build a 3D velocity model using velocity data from 2D seismic lines. This is the outline of this presentation. We start with the objectives, then some introduction about seismic velocities and the velocity model, then the various stages in the workflow for velocity model building are discussed, starting with velocity calibration, spatiotemporal velocity interpolation, geologically constrained velocity modeling, and finally creation of a velocity cube. Then we briefly discuss the applications of this velocity model. And finally we have our conclusions. The main objectives of this study are to develop a workflow for building a geologically realistic 3D velocity model using well logs, seismic velocities from 2D seismic lines and interpreted horizons. Implement this workflow at a regional scale to a geologically complex area and maintain the velocity model as a regional database that can be used for various applications. We know that velocity is the single most important parameter in seismic. Velocity information is derived from seismic data through velocity analysis. More accurate velocities are obtained from borehole measurements. The well velocities are only available at well locations and these velocities can be used to calibrate the seismic velocities which are distributed throughout the survey area. An accurate estimate of velocity is important as velocity governs a number of critical seismic processing and interpretation workflows such as normal move-out corrections, migration, pre-stack time migration, pre-stack depth migration, inversion, as well as rock physics. Our main aim in this study is to develop a velocity model. A geologically realistic velocity model represents the variations in velocity according to the geologic structures. This velocity model is essential for true depth imaging. A workflow is presented to build a geologically constrained regional 3D velocity model from raw RMS velocity functions obtained from 2D seismic data. Now this is the complete computational workflow for building a velocity model. We take RMS velocity functions from 2D seismic lines, apply datum corrections, and then a smoothing filter is applied to remove any spikes from the velocity function. Finally, the velocity is converted into average velocity. On the other hand, the well velocities are also converted into average velocity after transforming them from depth to time domain. The seismic velocities are then calibrated using these well velocities. Spatiotemporal interpolation is applied to the velocity data to get a velocity grid. In the next stage, a geologically constrained velocity model is created from the velocity grid through horizon interpolation. And average velocities are then converted into interval velocities. Finally, we have a 3D velocity cube from which data can be extracted along a cross-section, horizon slice or time slice. The workflow has been applied to create a regional 3D velocity model of Upper Indus Basin. The study area covers about 2400 square kilometers and lies in the southern Putwar platform zone in Putwar sub-basin which forms the eastern part of Upper Indus Basin. The area has a complex subsurface geometry which poses challenges in building a regional velocity model. This is a compressional regime and therefore anticlinal structures are pop-ups. 2D seismic lines from three vintages have been used in this study, where Misa Kaswal lines are in the east, Balkasar lines are in the west, and Chakwal lines are in the middle. 
velocities from nine wells, which are evenly distributed in the area, have been used for calibration of seismic velocities. This is the base map of the study area. These are the Misakas wall lines, these are the Balkasar lines, and these are the Chakwal lines. Now this is the velocity calibration process. A large moving average operator is applied to the well velocities to smooth them out. These velocities are then converted from depth to time domain. Then using formation tops or interpreted horizons, the velocities are blocked averaged to get interval velocities for each geologic interval. Finally, the interval velocity is converted to average velocity. Now a seismic velocity function closest to the well is also converted into average velocity. Using these average velocities from seismic and well, a calibration curve is generated. This curve is multiplied with seismic velocity functions to upscale them according to the well velocities. In case of multiple wells, a calibration grid is generated which in turn is multiplied with the seismic velocities grid to upscale it according to the well velocities. To get an idea about the subsurface structures, this is an interpreted seismic section. As we can see, this is a compressional regime and pop-up structures are commonly observed. Similarly, this is another interpreted seismic section and we can see highly undulating structures. It is important to note that in order to build a geologically realistic velocity model, the velocity needs to be constrained according to these undulating structures. Now here we have the raw RMS velocity functions overlaid on the interpreted seismic section. These velocity functions have been picked through velocity analysis during seismic data processing. If we remove the seismic from the background, these blue lines represent the average velocity functions, the green lines represent the interval velocity functions, and these light blue or cyan lines represent the picked RMS velocity functions, and the red dots are the velocity time pair nodes. As we can see, the velocity functions are sparsely located along the seismic line and the velocity nodes are irregularly spaced. We need to convert this velocity data into a dense regularly spaced velocity grid. The spatiotemporal interpolation is applied to generate a velocity grid from the irregularly spaced velocity data. Now the spatial interval is 1 CDP which implies that a velocity function has been generated for each CDP. Similarly, the temporal interval is 200 milliseconds, that is the velocity node is generated after every 200 milliseconds. A moving average operator is applied to this velocity grid to remove any unwanted spikes in the data. Now the smooth velocity grid needs to be constrained according to the geologic structures. Therefore, horizon-based velocity interpolation is applied. As we can see that now the velocity nodes follow the geologic structures and therefore the interval velocities now represent these geologic structures. This is our initial velocity model. Now we will apply an iterative forward modeling approach to refine the velocity model so that the seismic response of each horizon is enhanced. Here we can see the velocity functions at the start of the iteration process. These functions are convolved with an appropriate wavelet to generate the seismic response as shown. We can see that the third reflector is totally missing. In addition, the basement is also much weaker towards the right side. Now some optimum amplitudes are set for each reflector the iterative process adjusts the interval velocities and generates the synthetic model. 
It then compares the synthetic seismic amplitudes with the desired optimum amplitudes. And keeping in view the error difference, it readjusts the interval velocities in the next iterative step. This process continues until the amplitudes of each reflector have the minimum error difference with respect to the desired optimum amplitudes. After 70% iterations, the velocity model has been modified and its seismic response now shows a consistent basement and the third reflector has also improved. Here we can see that the basement has improved. Similarly, this third reflector has also improved. Now finally, at the end of the iterative process, the third reflector as well as the basement have further improved. We can see a lot of improvement here. Now this is the final velocity model which truly represents the subsurface geologic structures and therefore generates the subsurface image in its synthetic seismic response. The discussed workflow is applied to the velocities of all the seismic lines in the study. The processed velocity functions are color coded and displayed at their respective geographic position in a 3D wireframe. This provides a 3D visualization interface to navigate through the velocity functions. To generate a 3D velocity grid, geologically constrained interpolation is applied to the velocity functions. This is now an initial version of the 3D velocity model. Each velocity time slice in the 3D velocity grid is laterally smoothed to create a geologically realistic velocity field. Finally, we have the 3D velocity model in the form of a dense velocity cube having a spatial grid interval of 100 meters in both directions and a vertical grid interval of 4 milliseconds. This velocity cube can be visualized from all directions and the user can navigate through the time slices as well as cross sections in both directions. The 3D velocity cube can be maintained as a regional 3D velocity database from which velocity can be extracted in any desired form. This includes velocity time slices, horizon slices and cross sections. The horizon slices can be used to convert time grids into depth grids. Similarly, the velocity cross sections can be used in NMO corrections, migration, as well as pre-stack time migration and depth migration. In addition, the velocity field can also be used to compute other parameters such as pre-drill pressure regimes. Finally, it is concluded that the presented workflow can efficiently generate geologically realistic 3D velocity models from raw RMS velocity functions. It can be used to create regional 3D velocity models even from 2D seismic velocity data. These models can significantly improve seismic imaging in geologically complex areas. Thank you.